Well, the next D&D expansion is coming out soon, and you know what that means. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Yes, that is right. We're heading to one of the greatest settings in all of D&D, Spelljammer Adventures in Space. And it's time to get our crafting going for this. Now, as you can see from these horrible quality pictures from the 80s, Spelljammer's been around for a while, and we need some spaceships for our travels through space. So today, we're going to make some of those, and we're going to focus on two in particular in this first part. First is the Great Bombard. And the second is the Spacey Galleon. So here we go. We're going to plan out what we're doing today. First of all, we are making space. We're going to need some background for our actual battles to be set upon. So here we go. We're going to make a 3 by 2 sheet of felt. And we're going to paint it up with all kinds of nebulas and stars and such. And as you can see, I'm making our plan here for what we're going to do Today. So this is a pretty simple step. I'm just writing down. Maybe we'll put some stars on there, some nebulas, paint. What colors is going to be interesting. And of course, it's going to be double-sided, so we can use it for all the encounters we'll ever need in space and in Spelljammer. Alright, so next we also got to get the bases set for our miniatures. We're going to use mostly one-inch bases, especially in this video, but as you'll see in part two, we'll we're going to build some nautiloids and stuff that need some large bases. So it's pretty simple. We're just going to take a one inch miniature base. You can find those anywhere on Amazon or if you have spare bases lying around. We're going to paint that black and paint up the same nebula pattern that we put on the mat. And then we're going to attach a little plastic dowel to it. This will really tie everything together. And of course, got to have the black with that base. So here we go. We're actually planning out these ships and how we're going to design those now. This is mainly going to be chipboard. Uh, this first is the bomb board. And right now you can see I'm trying to figure out how to do the head of the ship. There's a giant cannon that the GIF have attached to their ships. And we got to figure out how to sculpt that somehow or use some bits from our bits box. We're going to put a little sail on there to tie everything together. And that'll probably be just a paper towel of some sort. And of course, it'll all be painted up to look just exactly like a ship. And yeah, that completes all the chipboard that we'll need for the bombard. So next up, we got the space galleon. Now this is pretty simple, and the drawing will probably take way longer than my thing goes. See, I drew two masks on there. That You can do that. I think we ended up just going with one for the size and scale that we're going for. But of course, however much you want to detail these, you can. Spell Jumper ships are highly customizable. And whatever you want to do to put these down at the table is great. But you see the Spacey Galleon? Pretty simple. Essentially just the Bombard, but with an extra sail. And without that front little nose pin. So, here we go. Without further ado, we're going to write some more plans down. And then we're finally going to get out of the planning phase and into the crafting phase. So get your black felt ready. And here we go. Alrighty, Brew. So first we're going to get this black felt and we're going to measure two feet on one side. And we're just going to make a little mark in that with our Sharpie. And we'll go and cut that out. Uh, the other side is going to be three feet long. And of course... Uh, I'm doing this for a college size table. I need to take this up to college and have it be portable. So it can't be overly big, but it also can't be too small, so it can't fit any ships. So I decided 2x3 is good, but of course, whatever dimensions you want for your area of space that you'll be fighting on is perfect with you. Of course, this is highly customizable, as I said. So we're going to start cutting that out, cut that 2x3 section, and then we're going to move on to the painting step. Now you can go whatever colors you want with this and we're just going to kind of shift back and forth with our paintbrush. Here you can see I started out with a light blue. This I think really highlights against the black pretty well. You're going to have to go over a few layers but frankly I like that. It gives room for a lot of highlights. And yeah, it gives a lot of room for a lot of galaxy making of your own. 
So here we got to plan our next kind of color, and you can keep it as black as you want, but I wanted to put a lot of nebulas over here, and inspired by some of those NASA pictures that just came out, I decided to put some orange come streaking off of the side here. And then I'm also going to go in with a, you see a little bit of already, as I did a test, but a little bit more violet as well. And you'll see we'll put that violet and blue on our miniature bases as well. So here's the important step. And these are the stars. And here's how we're going to make them. We're going to take a bigger brush, coat it all in white paint, and we're just going to flick it right on over everything. This I got from my sister Ella, her tips. She's made some paintings of space before, and they look really good. And she essentially did it the same way. So this is just a bigger scale. Of course, if you like this tip, check out some of Ella's work on the channel on Fascina Productions. And be sure to like and subscribe for part two and all that jazz. So here we go, we're just going to coat and paint everything over with white, paint into the nebules as well, try to get tons of white in various sizes all over there, kind of like a Jackson Pollock painting. And here we can see, hey, we're pretty much done. Of course, you can spend as much or as little time as you want on that. And yeah, I also double-sided it, so if you see something different in any of these videos, that is going to be that. But here's some zoom-ins and close-ups. Of course, you aren't going to be this close when you're playing the game, so if you see any little imperfections, you probably won't notice those, and your players certainly won't notice those from the table. Okay, with space out of the way, let's move on to our miniature bases. Here are some one-inch mini bases, and we're just going to take that same violet. You can use a normal mini paint. I just use some craft paints for these. doesn't have to be anything fancy for this style of crafting. It's really the amount of colors and details that work and we're gonna have to go over a few layers but that is perfectly fine here and we actually kind of want that streaking effect for various highlights you see i chopped a very bad brush up and coated it in white paint and i'm going to stipple on you can do the same trick we were doing before but for these much smaller one inch round bases that really won't work so i just went with the stippling method as a effect to get a bunch of stars on those bases. And of course, you're going to leave some of them black with just the white, some of them blue, some of them violet, and some of them both. But we're going to make sure to get stars on everything, as I'm going to show you in a second. You can kind of glob them up and put less. Ah, here we go. Here is where I put those stars on that violet. And you can see how it really brings all the color out. So, this next step, this next shot is going to show you how I got a plastic rod, I uh, got a plexiglass dowel just off of Amazon, I'm sure you can find it on your local hobby shop though, and I took a uh, saw to it and a sander to it that my dad had, and I chopped this off. Of course, be very careful, use goggles and masks so you're not breathing in any of those particles, and yeah, here we go. So you'll see the result of that in a second, and first, and lastly, sorry, we're going to uh, paint the rims back of all our bases, and there we go with our bases. Now, this kind of interlude step is, I didn't really know where to put this, but, you know, I thought I'd put it here. We're going to paint our sails. We're going to get some uh, glue, some yellow paint, and some brown paint. But, of course, if you have fancier mini or pa miniature paint, skeleton bone color will work wonderfully. And we're going to dip some white in there just to get the right exact color. And you can see, ooh, that's the perfect color for our sails there. And we're just going to batch paint this so it's much faster in the future. In future videos, I'll probably just tell you, hey, come back here and look how to paint this. It's pretty simple. And we're going to cut this up later as we get into our ships. So here we go, our two more bad images from the 80s, the Great Bombard and the Galleon here. And here's what we're kind of basing off of, the Icons of the Realms, official D&D &D minis of the two. And of course, we're not going to go as detailed, but we're going to start with some medium chipboard. Draw on our basic shape. You can see I already made one of them in the corner there, and I'm kind of basing it off that. Just draw a general shape, and try to have your base there so it will fit onto everything. And so everything lines up. We're going to cut that out, and you can see... We have one side, and we need this other side to be the exact same or close to the exact same as possible. So we're just going to take a little Sharpie, and we're going to mark that out and cut it out again. So we have two matching sides. There we go. It's going to be perfect. 
And we're going to need some way to connect them together. So we're going to bend them a bit just to get that round side. This is why chipboard is so perfect. And we're going to just take some super glue and glue those two together. Go on the underside and the front side. And it should be pretty sturdy and hold together. And nextly, we are going to get the cap for the ship. So we're going to take a little bit of chipboard, take some glue, and cut out a little triangle. We're going to super glue that back there as well. And now we got three of the sides. Now we need the top. Take another little slip, strip of chipboard. Bend it a little bit to fit that curve and fit it right in there. And this is a little bit trial error. Just kind of uh, seeing with your eyes. Not a little measuring we can do here, unfortunately. But it works out pretty well and looks pretty good. And this is going to be the basis for both of our ships today both the galleon and the bombard but for the bombard we need a little top piece which is where our bits box is going to come in or we can mold it i'll show you how to do that in a second but i took a little lion bit that i had from a terrain kit and was planning off where to cut its head and with my exacto knife there again be safe with that cut its little head off and i'm going to attach that with some more super glue we're just going to cut the t tips off these ships that's the only difference from the galleons and yeah you can see this is how it will look when we cut the tip off and there is how it looks when we glue that head on it looks pretty nifty and just like the galleon we also need a little topper to this and it's the same thing we just cut off the top little tip the same and there we go there is going to be our bombard now we're going to take some green stuff if you want the molding route. If you don't have a lot of bits, and that's perfectly fine. I honestly kind of like this one better. It looks a little uh, more customized, and that is what Spelljammer is all about, having your players have their own ship. We're just going to bend that down, and I'm going to put a little face in it. Kind of looks like a green dragon, but, you know, admittedly it kind of ended up just looking like a fish, which wasn't entirely what I was going for, but isn't out of place for a Spelljammer with their nautiloids and stuff. Put some eyes in there and everything. And yeah, uh, just simple green stuff that anyone can really do. And put some little filigree on the others. Put some windows on our galleons. And yeah, they're almost ready for paint after we put on some masts. You can use toothpicks or I had little wooden sticks that I was going to use. I just measured about a half an inch or a little less for these guys. Almost a third of an inch. And yeah, those are going to stick up and those are going to hold our masts in place. But first, we gotta get painting. And to lock everything in, we're gonna mix our first base coat with some Mod Podge. And you see this is just brown and Mod Podge, and they already are looking pretty nice. And with our galleons out of the way, we also have the Bombards looking pretty good with those cannon heads there. And next, we're gonna take a dry brushing to them in a lighter brown tone. This is gonna bring out the highlights and bring a little bit more realism into that brown tone. So we're gonna just get a little bit on our brush and kind of just paint that on very lightly. We're just going to go lightly over all the edges and all of that stuff. And you can see this is the end result. It's just a little bit of work that does so much. Adding that little highlight there. Feel free to highlight that as many times as you want. But now we're going to take a little bit of gold if you have some or any other highlight color you want. And we're going to paint up those cannon heads and some of the filigree that we put on our bombards. Next, we're going to take some light blue, and we're going to go in, highlight the cannon mouths, and also the windows for our galleons. And then we'll take a little white, a little bit of a nicer color, and put some on all those edges. And also, I painted one of them green, just as a little precaution there. And next, finally, we're going to take a little bit of wash, if you have some. If you don't, just take some brown or black paint and water down a lot. And this gets into all the crevices. This is what we in the hobby business, or in the hobby business, call liquid magic or magic in a pot or talent in a pot. We're just going to get all the edges and kind of line those. And it's going to add some depth. And now we're going to add some sails. We're going to cut out what we made before into an appropriate size. You can kind of eyeball this. And we're going to glue those on. I also painted some squares on these. You can go as crazy as you want with the designs. But at this small no one's going to really tell. Here we got our bases. We're going to put some hot glue on those. Of course, those rods are super glued to the base. But we're going to hot glue the ships. Because the ships don't have a very stable 
uh, side to put them on. And hopefully that'll melt them together. And here we go. This is the moment of truth. I was so happy. You can see this is the first time I was putting it all together. Took my hands off of the mini and saw it floating there through space. And man, that's a really magical feeling when you finish something like that. Here are our finished products. Woo! Here are some glamour shots of them just on my desk. And now, with everything together, here they are on that space background we made earlier. Here's some nice pan shots. Of course, didn't get the lighting quite right for this one. But you'll see when you make them for yourself. They're like absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on over and watching through this whole video to see how these Spelljammer ships were made. We really appreciate it. And subscribe and like for part two. We got so many more ships to get through. These bombards are great, but we got to have some scout ships. We got to have some nautiloids. We got to have some whale ships and even more. There's just so much of Spelljammer left to make, and we're going to keep getting better at making these videos too, and we hope you're along for the ride. Of course, yeah, here's one last beauty shot, the cover image for this, and I hope you like it. If you make some of your own, be sure to share it with us. We have an Instagram account now. Uh, it's the same as our YouTube. And yeah, we appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us. We're going to keep making this channel as good as it can be. Make sure to like, subscribe. We do some magic content here. My sisters and I do some great content. There's a Toad video coming your way. And yeah, just look out for everything coming up from Fasciana Productions. And some more Spelljammer news as it's releasing this Tuesday. So once again, thank you everyone so much for watching. I am Bobby Fasciano, and peace out.